I'm not saying that the St. Louis Blues are going to be a Stanley Cup contending team by any means, but I also think there's a little bit of an underestimation about how they will do this season. Your Locked On Blues, your daily podcast on the St. Louis Blues. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome back to Locked On Blues. I am your host, Haley Taylor Simon, here a part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It is Friday. It is August 25th. And that means that it is almost September, which means that it's closer to some preseason action, some camp, and we're only 48 days away from the start of the regular season, which makes me happy as I'm a hockey girl and I miss the Blues. But we have a lot to talk about on today's episode, and obviously there has been this big conversation that I started about who the Blues' biggest competition will be this season. And yesterday I focused on the Central Division, being that that is the division that the Blues are in, the division of teams that, you know, the Blues are going to face the most. But I want to bring it to the entire NHL and have that discussion. Of course, one of my favorite segments, Are We Feeling Blue? And then Blues History Minute of the Day. I am not going to lie to you. I will be talking to you about a young prospect who I love, who the Blues just drafted, and I cannot wait to dive deep into that conversation. But first, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. All right. Who from the entire NHL concerns you the most when it comes to playing against our St. Louis Blues. The first thought that came into my head for some reason is when the Blues take on the Carolina Hurricanes, that is a team. I mean, they're a very good team, but I'll tell you why they concern me. They are one of the only teams in the NHL, and at least this is my opinion, that have equally as strong as an offense as they do as a defense. And a lot of the other teams in the NHL, I feel like they're either more defensively focused or more offensively focused. That is the one team that comes to my mind that is elite with both, which concerns me. But obviously, um, when it comes to this upcoming season, I want to have my focus more on the central division. So it's been really difficult for me. Honestly, to think about the entire NHL, that is a lot of teams, a lot of hockey. But I asked you on Twitter, and I wanted to dive into this, because there's so many teams, right, especially when it comes to the West. And teams in the West that concern me off the bat will be the Dallas Stars. I said this in yesterday's episode. I think that they're the most likely to win the Stanley Cup this upcoming season. They scare me. Focusing more on the Central Division, I have to, again, go with the Avalanche. For whatever reason, we just do not match up well against the Colorado Avalanche. And they've always been a kind of like a really hard opponent for the Blues. And then, oddly enough, and I know this is maybe hot take alert, boom, 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 boom. The Vegas Golden Knights, despite the fact that they won the Stanley Cup and despite the fact that a couple of our former players are on that team. They don't necessarily concern me this upcoming season. I think it's just because the way that the Blues are, um, I know they're they're not going to be stealing cup contenders, right? The Knights, they just won the cup. Cool. I can't, and maybe this is because I'm just so realistic about this upcoming season, I, if they lose to the Knights when they play them, I'm not going to be surprised. But it's kind of like the year after when the Blues won the Cup, right? That next season, like we were okay. We weren't the best. So I'm not expecting Vegas to – it's really hard after you win the Cup to continue to stay that high up. But as I said, I asked you on Twitter, so I'm going to read some of your comments. I said – Who in the entire NHL concerns you the most going against the Blues this season? 
KMAC said Edmonton, Colorado, and Dallas. And I actually replied and said, spot on. That's basically who I've had. Sarah says the blues. <laughs> Seriously, I love my team, but I don't see them competing here. And I like that take, Sarah, and I will tell you why. Maybe the Blues' biggest competition in the NHL this season is themselves. I think that's a really interesting perspective that once they get their act together, they could be a really good team, but their biggest competition right now is themselves. And at first I was like, okay, is this like poetic? Are we going to like kind of read between the lines? But I think that what Sarah was trying to articulate made sense to me because I feel that way too about the Blues. I feel like their biggest competition is truly themselves in the sense of for whatever reason, last season, they weren't clicking as much and there was a lot of issues, right? So maybe it's not about any of the other 31 teams. Maybe it's truly just about focusing on your team and how you can do better. So that was a cool little spin on my question. I like that, Sarah. Um, Dak Max said, in their post-cup seasons, I feel Colorado has been their kryptonite, and I always cringe when I see them on the schedule. McKinnon and crew just seem to have their number. And then I said, it doesn't make me feel better that they're both central teams. And then he said, though Binner may have stolen the series in the 21-22 postseason if Kadri didn't take him out. I agree. Um, Josh said the hurricanes are the best. And I explained why I thought that. So I said, why do you think going against the blues, there's not a good mesh because the hurricanes, I said, this is just something that I was thinking about how they're just so dominant on both things. But I wanted to know Josh's opinion on why he thought that way. Cause I was curious if we had the same kind of opinion and this is my first time reading this comment and josh thinks just like me they have great defense and offense are you kidding me it's because it's accurate there's not many teams in the nhl that are so strong offensively and defensively and it's usually one or the other and i'm not saying that it's like an 80 to 20 ratio i'm saying it's more of like a 60 40 Something like that, where it's not completely that far off. But when I look at teams, and I'm going to pull up right now so I can get my little visual. I'm sure you guys love visuals as well, and I will try to insert it into the podcast at some point. When I look at the Atlantic Division going against the St. Louis Blues, I think a team that the Blues might kind of struggle against because, again, the Blues' biggest problem right now is their defense. And I feel like a Toronto, the Maple Leafs, they're such a strong offensive team, not as much defensively. That's a team that they could struggle with. When it comes to the Metropolitan, as I said, the Carolina Hurricanes are just solid in both, and I feel like that's going to take them out. But also the New Jersey Devils, too. They have such strong offense, and they're fast, and they're young, and that also concerns me. When it comes to, I kind of talked about the center. We're not going to go over that again. And then the Pacific, as I said, the Oilers concern me in that sense with their offense. So you really need to look at the teams that have the strong offense. I'm not necessarily worried about the teams that have great defense because I feel like the Blues really thrive offensively. But I don't know. It's an interesting conversation to have. And it's interesting to get different perspectives on why you feel this way. And I think at the end of the day, if the Blues improve their defense, they could, and I've said this before and I'll say it again, they could make the playoffs in a wild card spot. I'm not saying you're going to win the Central because that's not happening. And if it does happen, then I'm glad I'm wrong. But realistically, I love the Blues. You know, this is my team. I, I find it really hard to say right now at the end of August that I could see them winning the Central because that's not going to happen. I am so realistic sometimes and I'm more negative than positive to where people are like, oh my God, do you even enjoy sports? Yes, I do. I just, I'm really realistic when it comes to the logistics of things. And 
the Blues, they're a team that could stir up something in the next couple of seasons, which I'm going to dive into in my next segment as to why that is. But right now, I wanted to talk about the entire NHL and give teams that I think that the Blues are going to struggle against. I am not saying it anyways. If I didn't name a team, I'm not saying that the Blues are better than that team. I'm not saying the Blues are going to perform great. I just wanted to talk about a few select teams across the NHL that I feel like the Blues might struggle against. And I definitely, in the next weeks, I will be talking to different locked on hosts that cover those teams and to have a discussion as to why I, about the mashups and stuff like that. I know like the predators, I'm going to be talking to them coming up in the next couple of weeks. And I want to have those conversations so you can get a better understanding of those teams and why it might be a little bit of a challenge against the blues. And one other thing before I change my segment Actually, you know what? I'm going to tease it. Hold on. I will tease what I'm going to talk to you guys about (laughs) because it is actually very funny. Um, And I feel like you guys will just find that funny. All right. Football season is about to kick off and FanDuel is giving you the chance to win all season long. Because right now, when you bet on a Super Bowl winner, you can get bonus bets every time they win this regular season. Just pick any team to win the Super Bowl, and you'll get bonus bets for every victory. You can use your bonus bets on spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit fandle.com slash locked on and start earning bonus bets with America's number one sportsbook. That's fandle.com slash locked on. And if I were you right now, I would take out your FanDuel app and I would first off use code locked on and I would choose the Kansas City Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. Why am I being dramatic about that? Because they are a dramatic team with Patrick Mahomes being the league's MVP and Super Bowl MVP last season. There's no doubt in my mind that they can do it again. So make sure you select the Kansas City Chiefs and you can get those bonus bets all season long. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Okay. I create a drama. I create a drama. I am like the CEO of creating drama accidentally. And it was because of yesterday's episode, but I do not care because I still stand behind what I said on yesterday's locked on episode. I really came at the Chicago Blackhawks. I I didn't have to do them as dirty as I did, but they actually kind of deserved it, so I did. The Blackhawks, they've been gritting their mouths all offseason. I'm not saying the Locked On hosts. I love them. I'm saying the rest of the Blackhawks, like the fan base, and I'm sick of it. At the end of the day, yes, you got Connor Bedard, Taylor Hall. That's awesome, but you also only had 59 points last season which is not something to be proud of. And okay, I get it. I said that they don't concern me when it comes to playing against the St. Louis Blues. And they don't concern me when it comes to playing against the St. Louis Blues. And this is the thing. I got some comments. This is for Michael. First off, thank you, Michael, because Michael complimented my appearance. But Michael then came at me and said, I'm sorry to tell that, but you and your fan base should be very worried about the Blackhawks in a couple of years. Michael, 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 did I say that this was a conversation for a couple years from now? I said this upcoming season, they don't concern me. Michael, I said this upcoming season, the Blackhawks don't concern me when it comes to playing against my St. Louis Blues because they don't. You can have some great players. I can respect that you have some awesome talent, but you can't expect them to be the best team in the NHL just because they had the number one overall draft pick. Sometimes things take time. And, okay, sure. Do the Blackhawks have some picks in the upcoming seasons? Yeah, they do. So do we. And I'm – listen – I'm not saying our picks are better because they're not, but we do have some talent 
And I think the Blues get underestimated. The whole Chicago fan base really came at me, and I said I decided to go at them on a random Thursday, and I did, because they're not the only team that has some pretty good talent. And this is what I'm going to get into. That was my segue to get into my favorite human being in the planet. Dvorsky! I'm sorry if I broke your speakers, but Debrur Dvorsky is one of my favorite Favorite young prospects, 10th overall. Kid is a stud. And I'm excited about him. I'm so excited about him. So Michael Mayer, who is a beat reporter for the St. Louis Blues, tweeted out this beauty of a video of divorce his schooling in the preseason for the IK Oscar Shum. I probably mispronounced that. But this video, I'm just going to describe it to you right now. He has the puck, he passes it, the puck gets brought back to him, and he just puts up this beauty into the net off the wrist. Yeah, absolute beauty. And one thing that I thought to myself was, I cannot wait for him to wear that blue note. He is going to be so dominant on the ice. Oh, man, I cannot wait for Dvorsky to finally play an enterprise. I can't wait for him to finally just be on the blues. But again, sometimes it takes time and development. And that is the thing about Bedard. Yes. Your draft pick Chicago is able to play this season when you take on, I believe it's the Penguins is their um, first game of the season, the Blackhawks and Penguins. Um, That's really cool, man. Like I respect that. That's awesome. But Dvorsky is one of the most underrated guys I got drafted. And going 10th overall and being the absolute stud that he is on the ice, this is somebody that you should be worried about, Chicago. And to all these other teams that want to underestimate the St. Louis Blues, it's just going to fuel the fire because this team has such talent. You have a Robert Thomas that is taking over the league. You have guys that are a little bit older as a Braden Shen, absolute stud. How about Benner and Nett? You, you know what, Jordan Kyrie? Let's let's go talk about it. Let's let's have a conversation. Let's continue to disrespect the Blues. And I'm just going to name different players that are going to outplay your team. Because at the end of the day, this is what it comes down to. I'm getting really mad here. And this brings me into the are we feeling blue? I am feeling so good. I'm not feeling blue today. I'm feeling good. Um, let's go continue this little rant that I'm having. Guys, I'm getting angry. (laughs) I am getting super, super angry. So the Blues also signed forward Isaac Ratcliffe to a professional tryout. So I do believe that Ratcliffe was also a part of the deal and the Blues got, um, Kevin Hayes and he was drafted. Hold on, let me go. Yeah, no. Yeah. One second, folks, because I took my notes. Yeah, he was drafted by the Flyers in the second round at 35 overall of the 2017 draft. And you know what? He's a forward. He's only 24. He um, he mainly just played in the AHL. But this is, I'm not saying, I'm not saying he's bad, but I'm not saying he's good. I just think that it can't hurt in a way. And he'll most likely just play for the AHL. So that's not really something that's huge. But I do think that it's not a bad idea to just continue to develop these guys. But 24, I mean, I'm 24 years old and I'm about to just insult myself. 24 seems a little bit old to continue to develop guys that really haven't been able to make it into the NHL and they just say in the AHL. I'm not coming at you, Isaac. I want you to do the best that you can do. I'm just saying that that is something. um, Oh, man, I don't want to sound mean. I just don't think that. Okay, let's let's try to say this nicely. I just don't know if it's going to work out with him playing in the NHL. And I think that he's just going to be an AHL guy. That was my nice way of putting it. I respect um, I respect all the players, right? I respect every single athlete that takes you know, a step into uh, 
enterprise that takes a step wearing the blue note. I, I respect any player part of the organization, but a player like him just kind of seems like it's more of an AHL guy, which is fine, which is completely fine. He could surprise everybody. Um, all right. Before I continue to Blues History Minute, I just want to give you a reminder that you can find us on YouTube and you can see my face. And it is at Locked On Blues. If you're listening on like Spotify, Apple Music Series, wherever you listen, definitely check out the YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, hello, how are you? Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, I always say this, Twitter is where I'm most active. So make sure you follow us on Twitter at Locked On Blues or my own Twitter, which is Haley T. Simon. I... No, it's late August. Nothing happened today in this day in history. But what I want to do on today's Blues History Minute of the Day is talk about something that is coming up less than a month and that is very excited. It's Blues and Brews, and it's set for September 22nd at Ann Huser Bush Brewery. And there will be a live performance from country singer Chris lane which is super exciting and it is the first of its kind preseason event and i think that this event is really cool because it's an outside street party live music appearance by blues players and alumni food trucks and so much more and tickets are just 20 bucks so this is something that um really is continuing the celebration of the blues music on the city's history and the real origin of the team's name. And I think that this is really important. Um, and, oh, and St. Louis's own Marquise Knox will be, oh, that's awesome. So he'll be there too. Um, the best part I think about this is that the parking is also free. <laughs> and this is such a great way just to get more involved with the community. And this will definitely be an event that will just get everybody in St. Louis excited about the hockey season again. Again, no other NHL team is doing anything like this. The Blues have really took a step up in getting out to their fan base and being able to do more outreach, which is super important considering the season they had last year. But the reason why I wanted to use this in History Minute is because this is showing me that there is change being made with how the management how the front office wants to take on this season. It is showing me that they want, you know, the players and the fans to have better relations. The fact that current players will be there as well as alumni shows me that this is a team that truly loves and cares about us here in St. Louis. So make sure if you're not doing anything on September 22nd, it is a Friday that you'd head out. I love that the parking is free. <laughs> That's like my biggest pet peeve in life is parking and always having to pay for parking. But this is something that I thought was super cool. And it was just announced today. They kind of teased it earlier this week. They kept on saying September 22nd, be ready. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> is, is the captain being named? No, no, a captain was not being named. But I think that having such a big star as in Chris Lane, is huge and the blues focus the summer so much on you know blues music and i feel like they just did so much to help support the different community um when it comes to music and i'm not a huge music person but i do respect the importance that music has been for us here in st louis with the blues and uh it's really important to support your community so i love that all right, how I end every single episode, I want you to say it with me, let's go Blues.